and welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Catherine Ryan and Ed Byrne, Rob Beckett, Hugh Dennis and Stuart Francis. <laughs> we start with a round call. If this is the answer, what is the question on the board of six categories? Rob, which category would you like? Uh, politics. I love a bit of that. Your category is politics. The answer is 13. What is the question? Is it the uh, number of people on X Factor's first episode with dead relatives? <laughs> <laughs> if, it, if Wayne Rooney went to Real Madrid instead of Gareth Bale, how many months would it have taken him to manage the Spanish for hello? <laughs> Is it? I know what it is. Is it when <laughs> Louis Walsh uh, goes over to One Direction's house to play ping pong? How many little white balls are in the room? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it Actually, is. Spot on, mathematically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Is it on which day of Christmas do Wonga.com come and repossess everything? <laughs> Is it, uh, is it the number of BBC programmes currently hosted by Dara O'Brien? <laughs> <laughs> is it? How, how many times did I have to watch that Miley Cyrus video <laughs> before I could really consider myself to be well informed on the subject? <laughs> is, is it in fact, how many times a day does Oscar Pistorius think, well, I suppose I could just have knocked? <laughs> <laughs> is it the number of feet required by the restraining order that I have on Brian Blessed? <laughs> Stuart, I know you want some! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it the number of soldiers France will actually send to Syria? <laughs> okay. Is it the... In politics there, mate? Yeah. 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 At what age do you realise that One Direction might be shit? <laughs> Do we have a crack Do we have a crack What Please. is the atomic number for unluckium? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. Uh, I'm glad you tried to slip that one under the wire. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Correct answer? It was by how many votes uh, did the government lose the crucial vote on Syria? Yes, it was. Thank you very much, Steve. Yeah. Well done, mate. <laughs> yes, the question I was looking for was, by how many votes was Prime Minister David Cameron defeated in Parliament last week on the proposed military strike on Syria? This is the news that after recalling Parliament early, the coalition lost the vote by 272 votes to 285. 39 members of the coalition voted against the motion. Nothing, after a really funny round, gets the mood up in a room like Syria being mentioned, a situation <laughs> of deep political complexity and huge humanitarian sensitivity. The what? kind of stuff that Mock the Week does so well, historically. <laughs> I heard that uh, some of the ministers missed the vote because a bell wasn't functioning. I don't understand that because everyone in Parliament is a functioning bell. <laughs> well, yes, a number of them didn't actually. Um, uh, Justin Greening, and, uh, who's the International Development Secretary, and the Foreign Office Minister Mark Simmons, say they didn't hear the bell because they're in a room discussing Rwanda. Oh, uh, wink, uh, wink. Uh, wink. <laughs> <laughs> that old chestnut. <laughs> <laughs> Let us not deliberately imply anything other than. <laughs> <laughs> We should just legally point out that it's perfectly reasonable for the International <laughs> Development Secretary and the Foreign Office Minister to discuss Rwanda at any stage. Don't. Parliament, I think, you know, the vote went against Cameron because Parliament yes. was very worried that going to war is like a mobile phone contract. It's very easy to start, it's impossible to leave, <laughs> and it's very expensive when you're abroad. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit rich, though, that Labour have come out so heavily against any kind of action, though, doesn't it? Lib Labour are all like, oh, we, we shouldn't be, not without, not without UN support and not if it's illegal. And, uh, it, uh, memories are kind of short, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> don't, don't you remember Iraq? It just seems a bit much, Labour taking this hard line with the Tories on this. It's a bit like, it'd be a bit like Madonna phoning up Lady Gaga and going, for God's sake, put some clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> Good, well, the thing is, you know, we've said, you know, you're thinking, 
the way to stop him killing innocent civilians is probably not sending him cruise missiles, which are liable to kill innocent civilians. But we need to send him something to make him think twice about using chemical weapons again. Something surprising. I'm thinking atomic kitten. They've just <laughs> reformed. <laughs> 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 it's 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 well, you know what? Of the, many, of the many criteria in which you judge that, I think surprise, it definitely rates very highly. <laughs> <laughs> Which lineup of Atomic Kitten are you planning to send in? Well, if you send in Kerry Katona with a credit card, she will bankrupt the country. <laughs> <laughs> Kerry Katona would bring more chemicals in, though, so. <laughs> <laughs> According to Obama, now, this is going to harm the special relationship. And John Kerry, as well, has said that, that the special relationship is now in jeopardy, which I think is good because I think the special relationship has always been a bit creepy, especially when you consider the age difference between the UK and the US. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> the special relationship fell apart about ten years ago, didn't it? In Love Actually, when Hugh Grant was in charge. <laughs> <laughs> Is this why you chose politics as a choice? <laughs> <laughs> I always think, you know, if you're not sure on something, give it a go. It might be for you. Um... <laughs> How has Obama reacted to this, then? Oh, very badly. <laughs> <laughs> He's done his homework. Yes, he's <laughs> yes there, in fact, there's a picture of him here in what, one of the most brash political photographs I've seen in a long time. <laughs> essentially, essentially going, I'm not happy, and, I, and I've got my ass-kicking shoes on right here. Yeah. <laughs> he's essentially saying, I'm just giving my balls a bit of air. <laughs> Yeah, he's on the phone going, yes, the desk is doing that thing of floating off the ground again. <laughs> so, I, I, I've got it under control for the moment, but if you can send somebody with some weights or something... Joe Biden is of no help in this situation. <laughs> he's just looking on. I, yeah, I heard they were discussing Rwanda as well. <laughs> <laughs> for doing... <laughs> if that was a photograph of Bill Clinton, you'd think they'd just airbrush Monica Wilinski out of it. <laughs> <laughs> This is a power move. One power move is to sit and eat when you're in a tete-a-tete -tete with someone. Another is lunging. Like, look how, look how you feel now. We're kind of having an argument. What about now? <laughs> <laughs> then you know karate's on its way. If that, was it to eat? Was the other one, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's got three phones. I know he's a president. He's got three phones. It's ridiculous. Well, he it? might. He might have three phone calls. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, you think, think, yeah. <laughs> In fairness, you think though he might have a secretary. <laughs> Or yeah. one phone that could, was capable of mm. taking many lives. So, yeah, it does seem unusual that he's going, I don't know, I'll, I'll try to find out. Mm, uh, I've got somebody else on the phone here. <laughs> <laughs> he's not happy with it. Wait a minute, you wait on the line. Both of you wait on the line. I'm going to ring the other number. Ah, this isn't working for me. <laughs> with uh, Obama's foot on the, uh, the desk, I think it'd be funny if a comedian on a panel show were to say, uh, uh, so Brock here, I I'm going to put you on sneaker phone. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be funny if a comedian on, on, on a panel showed <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I think it'd be funny. And speaking of the, of the comments, what, how, what is France's position? Doggy about? style. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, I've been there. OK. Well, well, can, can... <laughs> Next topic. Can... <laughs> yeah, because that, that, that topic's settled. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> in other news... <laughs> What has Cheryl Cole spent a reported 50 hours doing? She, she has had a new tattoo done all over her back. <clears> and it's all over her bum as well. There we go. Yeah. Um, you know, now, it look, she doesn't look bad, does she? Looks good, having four roses tattooed on your ass. You're thinking that's a mistake, though. In ten years' time, that is going to look like Kew Garden, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's hacking on her. Harsh on her, as the kids say. Um, <laughs> thanks, Ed. Um, <laughs> And they get into the regional stereotypes. Uh, she's from Newcastle. She is a Geordie, so it, it, there's a good chance once, twice a week, she's going to take a shit outside, right? <laughs> <laughs> what they do. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she can squat in a rose garden, uh, <laughs> twist one off. Bob's your uncle. <laughs> well done, Jerry. It apparently took 50 hours, 50 hours to get it done. Are you thinking, well, 
you know, while she was having the tattoo done, she wasn't making or releasing music. <laughs> so it's not all bad news, is it? Yeah. You know? When she does sex, the naughty way, is it called botany? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess her real worry is she'll get stalked by Alan Titchmarsh with an aphid spray. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to have your entire arse done as a tattoo, have something a bit more practical. Maybe, like, a pair of shorts or something like that. <laughs> I know mean, when, when it's a bit hot and, you know, you're getting it, you know, you think, oh, yeah, down we go, nobody will notice. <laughs> <laughs> I think if I, was, if I was going out with Cheryl Cole, I would definitely get a picture of some secateurs tattooed on my penis. <laughs> 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 she, she actually... She got, look quite got, funny, got then. Beat, it just looked like you're pruning a bush. <laughs> she got, also, you wouldn't use a condom, would you? You'd use a Fison's grow bag. <laughs> <laughs> OK, at it. the end of that round, the point. <laughs> oh, Rob, to an end. Matthew, yeah. I'm so bringing that to an end. Thank oh. you for that. Uh, you just yeah. get, like, a watering can yeah. tattooed. They're all, uh, all here. <laughs> How cool would that be? Oh, watering can. Really? That would look sure. awesome. You would get a B tattooed on your cock. Like, are you going... That'd be a ridiculously you... large B, though. And you go, Daddy want pollen. Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, the end of that round. The point's going to Rob here in Sherrod. Good well done. Now we play a round called School of Hard Mocks. This game <laughs> involves Rob, Andy and Stuart, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launch a wheel of news and whoever chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. The winner is whoever I think is the funniest. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first subject is consumerism. Who wants to come in on that? Andy Parsons. So we, uh, we always like to have a go at politicians, don't we, for getting us into debt. But we, we're also addicted to debt, aren't we? People waste their stuff. Well, you know, loads of nonsense, isn't it? Things like personalised number plates. Don't ever do it. Anybody can get a personalised number plate, yeah? You can change your name by deep pole for a tenner, right? <laughs> Just change your name to your car registration number. And it's the same people going, oh, yeah, look, I've got a new watch. I've got a new watch, I have. Yeah, it's a diver's watch, yeah? Goes down to a depth of 200 metres, this does. 200 metres is the depth of the North Sea. <laughs> if you find yourself at the bottom of the North Sea, <laughs> you're not diving. <laughs> the ship has sunk, the air bubble is running out, and it's going to be little consolation, you know what, the bloody time. <laughs> Thank you very much, Andy Parsons. OK, let's spin the wheel again. The next subject is food. Who wants to come in? Yeah. Rob. Uh, I like food. I eat it most days. Um, <laughs> and uh, the thing is, that I've moved out with mum's now, so like, I go home and see my mum and dad and I'm excited to see them, but I'm more excited to see the contents of the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> but she's going to die at me, mum, right? She got all the brothers round, me brothers round for a Sunday lunch. You know what she did? The old family for Sunday lunch. Couscous. <laughs> for lunch. <laughs> I rung child line, they didn't want to know. <laughs> I don't trust couscous, to be honest with you. Anything you put in your mouth that feels already chewed should not be in there. <laughs> it's fat sand, I don't want any part of it. <laughs> she served it with toasted pita bread. Have you ever toasted pita? Anyway, why is it so hot? <laughs> I've had a bit of folded bread, what's its problem? <laughs> a little bit of toast pops out warm and toasty, the pita's on fire. <laughs> Once you get past the hour, I've got the dragon breath inside to deal with. <laughs> There's only two things in the world hotter than toasted pita bread. One's the sun, yeah? <laughs> and the other's a cheese and tomato toasted sandwich. <laughs> What's that prick's problem, right? <laughs> What's his problem? Do you know what I mean? The cheese, I've not got a problem with the cheese. The tomatoes? <laughs> they little slices of lava. <laughs> I'll put in a toasted sandwich maker at Dante's Peak. What are you doing? <laughs> You bite into it, anchor onto the slice, you pull the sandwich away, the slice stays, slaps you on the face, <laughs> burns your face off. <laughs> Three days, I'd have been red circle like that. <laughs> I look like a thirsty dog. <laughs> well, job, Rob. OK, that leaves us Stuart. Let's see what you've got. It's been the wheel. And the topic is jobs. Where you go. 
Was my French teacher into golden showers? We. <laughs> oui. <laughs> I'm a Canadian comedian, but if people think I'm Russian, Soviet. <laughs> As a gynecologist, I was terrified of vaginas. I won't go into it. <laughs> Very sad, I've just come back from the funeral of my Coke dealer. I was fired as a Boy Scout leader. I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> I used to be a sarcastic high jump coach. Get over it! <laughs> I used to be a professional table tennis player in Southeast Asia, and recently I went back for a big party. Oh, it was a real Hong Kong ping pong ding dong. <laughs> and someone fired up the old karaoke machine. Oh. It was a real Hong Kong ping pong ding dong sing song. <laughs> and someone rang the doorbell. <laughs> cops. <laughs> was the cops. I used to be a cop. One night a guy asked me if he, uh, if he could urinate on my wrist. I said, not on my watch. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good night! Thank you very much, Sir Francis. Points there for Sir and Rob and Andy. What the hell? Come on, everybody gets points. Now we play a game called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what's happening. So, what's going on here? Um, <laughs> have the Newcastle United signed three new players? <laughs> is, it, is it Badgers protesting against the possible culling of Brian May? <laughs> blows on his hair because there'd be a field of dandelions. <laughs> <laughs> is Brian May supporting a charity for black dogs that have been run over by road marking lorries? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brian May and the Pepe Le Pew Appreciation <laughs> Society. Yeah. <laughs> kind of right, that I couldn't find my badger costume so I just painted stripes on me Womble mask. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone know what it actually is? It's part of Brian May campaigning to save the Badgers from the cult. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Ed Byrne. <laughs> yes, of course, this is the news that protests have begun in the wake of the Badger cult in the West of England. Trade marksmen, including farmers, have been granted a licence to shoot up to 80 Badgers each night in the first of the government's controlled pilot schemes to destroy up to 5,000 Badgers in a bid to tackle the spread of bovine tuberculosis. People have objected to this, though, have they not? Well, the thing is that people love Badgers and they, people love hedgehogs, but people don't know that Badgers eat hedgehogs. So the government had got it all wrong. Instead of campaigning to kill the badgers, they should campaign to save the hedgehogs, and then the same people who are dressing up as badgers will be dressed up as hedgehogs going, save the hedgehog! <laughs> Cute it. Yeah. Cute it. Yeah, they eat hedgehogs, and bizarrely, hedgehogs and skylarks. That is a... <laughs> that's a bit of hunting that I never thought the badger would be capable of. Just flying behind the skylark on a set of <laughs> improvised wings with a skylark mask. You know when they're that V, yeah. when they uh, migrate, and just eating the last one in the line and moving <laughs> forward one, and then going, is there something behind us? And there's just a badger floating <laughs> there. Don't mind me, I'm another skylark. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to make Spring Watch more interesting, because it'll be a bit like it's been directed by Quentin Tarantino now, won't it? <laughs> it'll certainly make it very tense. Oh, we join them outside the set, and they slowly... Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's an explosive end to tonight's Spring Watch. Yes. We had eight hours to see that badger. I mean, even, even the coverage around it. I mean, this is how the Sunday Telegraph ran the story about the badger cult. It's just an unfortunate conjunction of photograph and headline there. <laughs> It's blind that it's essentially like the Crimean War at this stage. <laughs> and badgers, they eat eggs and they just complain and they eat like rotten fruit and they get drunk off it. They're basically the elderly. We don't eat them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you do feel a bit sorry for them though because, you know, the whole Syria <laughs> thing is about you know, we need more evidence before we take action. There's no evidence that culling badges works. Yeah. And the badges, presumably, are, you know, thinking, well, you, why are you attacking us without a UN mandate? What, what's <laughs> Who has joined Forrester Brian May in protest of the badger cult? 
Brian, it... Brian Blessed. Yes, Brian Blessed has as well. They <laughs> have. There he is. Oh! Yes, they have released... Uh, there's a single which has been become quite popular because of shows like this, for example, uh, uh, going on about it, because it's great. Uh, we even have a clip of the video, um, which is the Badger, 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 Saves the Badger song. Oh, no! Clearly, that's how they catch the Skylarks. <laughs> 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 Moving on, what's up with this sad fellow? Oh, oh. oh no. Oh. When I saw this photo, it reminded me of a conversation I had with Dara before he went into makeup. And that is. <laughs> that is. Thank you. Hmm. Why is... does the comedy on television have to be so hurtful? <laughs> Dara, this is Dara just after he... I'm not oh. doing it. Oh, Dara, Dara, you've got a little something coming out your lip there. You've got a little... So oh, sorry, that was... Sorry, that was the other one. Sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Are we only doing this round so you can do a lingering yeah. comparison <laughs> photograph with me and a blobfish? Is it? It's not, it's not we, you. Yeah, can we, I think we can move on from this. To be honest, that looks like William Hague has swum too close to the Fukushima plant. <laughs> well, I think it's what most people on Match.com actually look like. <laughs> <on. laughs> Does a badger sneeze itself inside out? <laughs> Do they know why he's in the news, by the way, the blobfish? Well, is it because is this why fish normally come in batter? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> is it Nemo checking into the priory? <laughs> <laughs> get pain, get to his head. Is, is it in fact? Oh man, I lost myself. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's quite worrying because it, it does. You know, is it one of Jordan's implants that have become sentient? <laughs> <laughs> I wrote most of the first book myself. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's been, uh, it's been nominated, the blobfish has been nominated by a, uh, an organisation called the Ugly Animal Preservation Society, which is a conservation society that basically highlights the fact that we tend to want to conserve cute, cuddly animals, uh, not delightful creatures like the blobfish, uh, or those of the titty caca water frog, which is not... <laughs> just, which looks <laughs> actually quite cool, uh, to be honest. It's the uh, the pig-nosed pig -nose turtle was in as well. It's all right. It's oh, okay, right. you know. It just looks great. like a normal turtle with a gas mask. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the perennial favourite, which is the proboscis monkey. Oh. They're trying um, to save the pubic lice. Why do you want to save the pubic lice? Pubic lice, pubic lice are, are dying out because of um, well, Brazilian, topiary, to Brazilians and, uh, and just general t tidiness, cleanliness. Are Brazilians going around killing pubic yes. lice? Yeah. Yes. Because they spread bullying. You think, they you think they'd have bullying. better things to do protecting their rainforest? <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit weird having like ugliest animals, but it'd be even weirder if it was like, oh, let's save the fittest ones. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, this beer's got really nice horns. <laughs> <laughs> okay, at the end of that round, the points go to Ed, Catherine, and Andy. <laughs> Now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read out this week's topics and then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Extracts from DVDs that would never sell. Welcome to exercise for manic depressives. Down. Up. Down. <laughs> Welcome to this How to Use a DVD Instruction DVD. <laughs> First, put this DVD in the slot <laughs> for the DVD. <laughs> Steven Spielberg, Circumcision. The Director's Cut. <laughs> Welcome to the Suffragette story with me, Miley Cyrus. <sighs> Ready to get fit, ladies? It's Johnny Depp, Pilates of the Caribbean. <laughs> the main point of this self-help DVD is that only you 
can help you. No need for me then. Thanks for the 20 quid. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Funeral Etiquette. When's the right time to fart? <laughs> we are in Africa filming the continent's biggest predator, Madonna in Malawi. <laughs> welcome to the best of German. Who do you think you are? So, your grandfather was a... OK, we'll leave it there. <laughs> Welcome to the best of Test Match Special. That one works. That really helps. This is the DVD you've been waiting for. All the tweets of Alan Sugar read out loud by Stephen Hawking. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Welcome to Filthy Dirty Nurses 2. The rise of MRSA. <laughs> Hello, I'm Ed Byrne. Welcome to Wank Yourself Skinny. <laughs> Work yourself thin with me, teen sensation Stuart Francis. <laughs> <laughs> it's the DVD we've all been waiting for. Two politicians discussing Rwanda. <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Unlikely things to hear on a motoring programme. <coughs> Listen to that deep, throaty roar of the man I've just run over. <laughs> George Michael says he's never driven a car that's handled so well on the pavement. <laughs> Now, I would describe this car as being very nippy, but apparently I'm not allowed to say that. I have to say it's made in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to shag a bloke. Welcome to Ride My Pimp. <laughs> Women everywhere have come together to announce their favourite car. It's the red one. <laughs> This car has a fail-safe anti-theft device. It's a Vauxhall Corsa. <laughs> <laughs> First, second, third, fourth, yes, all my wives have divorced me because I'm such a twat about cars. <laughs> Just a car, innit? It gives a shit. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this car is actually owned by Jeremy Clarkson, which is why I'm running my key along it now. <laughs> my first impression is that the dashboard layout is actually quite unorthodox and very minimalist. There doesn't seem to be a steering... Uh, actually, I'm sitting in the back. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it still has that new hitchhiker smell. I don't know about you, but I think it'd be quite nice to walk today. <laughs> <laughs> the sounds have been surprisingly low for the new Renault Bell End. <laughs> <laughs> this car has been modified for the American market. It's got six cup holders, a sandwich stand, and a small rotisserie attached to the dashboard. <laughs> This week on Top Gear, we're going to be talking about some penises. Cars! We're talking about cars! <laughs> cars! Oh, cars! <laughs> this car's personalised management system remembers who you are and how you drive. This morning, it locked me out and told me to fuck off. <laughs> well done, Dan Rapp, for the end, Captain and Andy! And that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, Catherine Ryan and Ed Byrne. <laughs> oh, commiserations to Rob Beckett, Hugh Dennis and Stuart Francis. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'm Dara Breen. Good night. <laughs>
Keys, Knockers and anything else beginning with K, David Mitchell and Jack Whitehall join the regulars for the brand new series of QI tomorrow at 10 on BBC Two.